Jamie, it's great to see you back on home shores here in New Zealand, back for the Karaka yearling sales, of course. An awesome time to catch up with you and, and find out how it's all been going in Hong Kong. I guess a good starting point is uh, what's it been like starting from scratch in a, in a foreign country? Uh, it's been a it's been a challenging time, um, but um, you know we we knew well. I guess we didn't really know what we were in for, but we knew that we were we were moving to a new place to set up our life and and, and our home um, and and start a new business venture. Um, but it, it has been uh, it's been a challenge. Um, had to uh, get out and do a lot of socialising, meet a lot of people. Um, and as the new boy in town, that is a luxury that you're afforded. Everybody wants to, everybody wants to meet you and and, and see what you've got to offer, and then uh, maybe give you a horse. So, um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a challenge, but uh, the it's starting to starting to become a little bit easier now. Was it what you expected? Um, probably not. Uh, like, you know, I thought I was an okay trainer here, and I just sort of get up there and. Uh, I just sort of do what I did at home and, and uh, just as an example give them Sunday off and, and just sort of work them six days a week but that, it, it, it's completely foreign, it doesn't work like that up there if you, if you give them a day off they'll come out of the box the next day like lunatics so you've, it's seven days a week, uh, every day there's something happening, the, the horses are working and Basically, you, you sort of turn them into robots into that into that system. Did you go there with a with a plan, and have you been able to stick to that plan, or is it very much adapting on the job? Uh, I think you've got to adapt. Um, sort of, I guess I arrived in town as I said earlier, sort of thinking it might have been a little bit easier than what it was. But um, um, now that we're getting a, a, a sort of a consistent flow of winners, it's becoming a little bit easier, um, and. You know, you enjoy training winners, but it's also a big relief because um, you, your owners are happy and the owners' friends are happy and the staff are happy and um, it is a big, big flow on effect. So uh, when you're winning, it's a great place, um, but when you're not going so well, it can be a bit testing. And I guess that means that the first three to six months, you're under a lot of pressure, aren't you? Well, you're afforded a, a, a little bit of time to settle in, um, but then once the horses are not running as well as what you might think they should be, uh, then a couple of them leave and, and go somewhere else. And uh, as I say, it's very cutthroat, but we're, we are starting to understand the system better now. The horses are starting to race better. Um, when we first arrived, we had a lot of sort of second and third string horses from other trainers, and uh, it's very hard to improve those horses. But now that we're getting into the sort of the second half of the season, uh, we've got some of the younger horses coming out and starting to run well, which gives you a bit of confidence that you sort of got your system, systems and your processes right. We've certainly had to adjust, and that was um, uh, something that Paul O'Sullivan said to me, you have to adjust because this is nothing like home. A team is always a very important part of, of what you're doing, and when you left New Zealand, your fiance Danielle Johnson, a leading New Zealand rider, went with you. How important has it been having a support person there? Uh, Danielle's been great. She's um, obviously a, a bubbly person and uh, she makes things fun and, and uh, when things aren't going as you want them to she's also good to sort of say you know it's not the end of the world you just got to keep going so um, yeah she's been a massive support and uh, she she's really made for Hong Kong like she she enjoys a drink and nice meal and a bit of shopping so uh, she, she's really enjoying it. And her racing knowledge as well is, is invaluable because she understands the industry, doesn't she? Can she? Has she got a role sort of within within the business? Well, she gets the uh, rods out of her legs from her fall uh, last January next week um, and then she'll be able to start riding a little bit of track work, which will be quite cool. It's taken, uh, taken sort of six months of paperwork and visas to um, get her um, visa organised. I, I was sort of hurrying the visa application along. I'm not sure if she was sort of pumping the brakes a little bit in the background. Um, yeah, yeah. Particularly at the moment when it is a little bit colder. Um, but yeah, looking forward to her being able to um, help with the track work. But obviously she's very involved in entertaining owners and, and getting along to the races and um, seeing what's going on. And, and, and as you say, it's... Um, I guess a bit of a reality check when things are going bad, but she can still see the horses are running well. Um, sort of keeps your spirits up a bit, a bit higher. So, yeah, she's a very important part of it all. 
staff is a, is a really a big factor up there in Hong Kong, who you're working with, the team closest to you. Uh, aside from Danielle, tell me about the team that you've got in place. So uh, I guess the main point is that you have an assistant trainer up there and he's a local so he can speak Cantonese and, and English and our assistant trainer is a, a guy called Jones Ma. Um, he's a really good guy, he's got a good way with the staff, he speaks good English which is, which is good for us. It's a very um, a very structured system, so there's the assistant trainer, then there's the head lads, and then there's the riding boys, and then there's the mafus, and they're the guys that look after the horses. Um, and each mafu looks after about three or four, three or four horses. Um, and there is quite a strong language barrier between uh, an expat trainer um, and, and the guys that are uh, speaking Cantonese and don't speak a lot of English and that's where your head lads and your, your riding boys and uh, your assistant trainer are very important because they communicate with the, with the wider staff. So um, yeah, it's uh, very important and luckily we've got, got Jones who's, as I say, got a good way with the staff but he's also very well connected with owners um, and he's been able to get a few horses into the stable and introduce me to a few new clients. So uh, yeah, it's a, a very important part of it all. Tell me about that first winner because that was that just a, a huge weight off your shoulders? Oh, for sure. Uh, we'd, we'd sort of tried to set it up the first night that we would try and get a winner and we drew a couple of bad gates and got caught deep and I think we had a couple of thirds. But um, uh, Handsome Rebel was our first winner at, at, at Happy Valley um, and he was actually a horse that we trained here for, for John Galvin, uh, Fortuna, before he was sold up to sold up to Hong Kong so um, yeah big big relief to, to get one on the board and um, uh, yeah it's b b very satisfying. It was great to see you combine with a fellow Kiwi James McDonald for a winner the other day. Uh, tell me about relationships with jockeys and, and who you've been working closely with. Yeah so it was great to have James on that horse the other night he gave him a, he gave him a great ride and not many people would have won on that horse so it was uh, very pleasing that firstly he accepted it and then he and then he rode it so well but um, there's a, there's, a, there's a wide variety of, of jockeys in, in Hong Kong, um, both local and um, expats from different areas of the world, from Europe, from France. Um, uh, obviously, there's a few from, from Australia, um, a few Aussies there, but obviously Zach's the leading rider, um, and he's been there a long time, and he understands the system, and, uh, and Zach and Nicole have been great um, to Danielle and I and sort of getting us set up, and. Uh, introducing us you know to the way that things work in Hong Kong um, and Zach's become a, a good ally and we try and get him as much as we can but he's very hard to book like he's uh, he's in high demand if you want to get Zach you need to be sort of thinking four or five weeks in advance um, so it, it's a very competitive um, just because somebody's ridden a horse well at its last start doesn't necessarily mean he's going to ride it again and that's something that's taken a bit of getting used to but as a trainer if you want to be the best trainer that you can be, then you've got to get the best rider that you can get. Um, and, and that's the cutthroat nature of training and, and riding. You hear at uh, Karaka, obviously, to buy some horses. Uh, tell me what you're shopping for. Uh, just trying to buy nice horses, trying to buy fast horses. Um, I've had a lot of success in, in, in my time at Tiaka with David Ellis buying our horses, and that's been a, a big part of my role, not only training, but getting around and seeing the yearlings. And I think I've... Uh, had a pretty good apprenticeship with Dave and with Joe Walls and, and other guys uh, within the team there. Um, so we're coming here to try and, try and buy some nice horses that are going to suit the style of racing in Hong Kong, suit firm tracks, uh, suit you know fast ground, um, running fast time. What's great f for us is that Dad uh, can, can get them ready for us and uh, put the polish on them in matter matter and, and uh, might say yes it's ready to come or no it's not ready to come or it needs more time or I think he's got above average ability he can go up so um, that's something that we will continue to work on and, and try and build and I, I would like to have more influence on the quality of the horses that are coming in the door um, because you've only got 60 boxes you, you really need to fill them up with the best quality stock that you can get um, and as we continue to build our ownership base and our clientele, hopefully the, the, the quality of the horses will continue to improve. You talk about uh, your dad Paul and of course mum Leanne, sister Libby, you're a really tight knit family. Has it been hard to be away from them? I guess you miss your family and friends, particularly when things aren't going very well, um, but they're only a phone call away. You might have a, a bad night at Happy Valley and you're getting in the car on the way home and you know what am I doing? Um, but then you just got to keep turning up. Next Sunday you might train a winner. 
Um, but it's just getting a regular flow of winners. But um, Hong Kong is home. We have the opportunity and we've been afforded a spot on the roster there to train the horses. So you just have to remember that every now and again. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to making Hong Kong our home and, and uh, seeing what the next 10, 15 years brings.